Hello and welcome back to part 10 of my Godot Asteroids tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be adding some uh, score to our game. We'll be putting some UI to display that score in the top of the uh, screen and setting up new themes for um, choosing custom fonts for our game. So let's get straight to it. So the first thing you'll want to do is uh, we want to add a, um, a new child of the main game here and you want to add in a canvas layer. I'm just going to search for um, canvas layer. So the canvas layer just allows you to kind of like um, put children objects of this and it's clever enough to know how big the screen is and stuff like that so you can it'll make your whole um, setting things out a lot easier if you have this in there. The next thing you want to do is you want to create as a child of that new canvas layer we're going to create a label that's going to hold the actual score. So if I create that label, you'll see it just kind of gets shoved up the top over here. The, um, you can resize these just by dragging them around. Um, but you can also use the um, layout options up the top here. So um, it is a certain size right now, but it's anchored in this top left hand side. So um, I do want it to be sort of like center and uh, middle of the top. So if I click on this layout, you'll see that there's there's actually one of these, this center top. If you click on that, it'll move it um, into that, that center position. The, it retains the size of it, so it, um, it won't like stretch it or shrink it. So I do want to make it kind of fairly big and I just click that top um, top center again. And that will just put it right in the middle here. The next step here is to try and get some text displayed on it. So the default text with the label selected here, I'm actually going to rename this to score label so that um, if I will have to find it at some point. So um, it's best that I do that. So this um, score label and I'm actually going to rename this to um, to canvas layer or lowercase to keep things um, approximately uh, to keep them consistent, so that's canvas layer. And the score label right here, if I put some text in here, so if I just say score and then a colon and then some numbers, you'll see that it's um, the default font for uh, Godot 3.4 is a heck of a lot better than the uh, previous versions. So it, it's, it's kind of okay, we will change it later on. But let's just get this working as it is right now. So the, um, the alignment here is uh, set by default to the top left so I'm going to set it to center align and then to vertical align center as well so it just goes right in the middle and I'm fairly happy with that we can get this functioning and then we can um, we can worry about uh, changing the font uh, in uh, a little bit later in the video so to get the score working I'm just going to go into my um, game script right here and uh, all we need to do is um, we need to create uh, something to store the score. So we'll make the score start at zero. So var score equals zero. Um, the uh, score is going to go up when we destroy an asteroid. So uh, it's pretty simple. Um, you just uh, we know we've destroyed an asteroid here. So let's say that we'll um, we'll add on uh, fifty or something like that every time we kill an asteroid, and then we need to just um, we need to update the score text. So um, it's not that hard to uh, to do that as well because um, we've set this up the game's um, looking pretty organized right now so we just drill down with the dollar sign into from the game into the canvas layer and then the score label and then we set its text the text that it displays um, to be equal to something so um, we wrote a score um, and then there was a space I believe or was there a colon quickly check so um, oh, there's a colon yeah so back to script so we'll do a colon and then we'll leave a space and then we want to um, add on um, the string of the score so we need to convert the actual score number to a string if we do it this way around so um, it's not too bad I'll show you this and then I'll show you the problem that it has and a simple uh, way to fix it So um, it starts with uh, four digits, and when we add up the score, you see the game um, adds up uh, 50 every single time, but it's kind of like a dynamic number of digits, and it's kind of 
maybe not what we want. We probably want to keep it to four digits all the time. And it's super simple to do. You just um, use a function that I saw in the documentation called pad zeros. So um, we're just uh, acting on this um, this string. This is a string value, or it evaluates to a string value. And then we just use pad zeros and then say how many digits you want. So um, I, I want to make sure that it's always um, four digits. So this just pads it with uh, leading zeros. Um, so just saving that again just to see you and show you and um, so every single time it's always four zeros and we just um, as the score changes it's always going to be those four zeros so that's basically um, done the functionality and uh, started off with this so let's just look at improving the um, the look of this um, of this font because it's a little bit small and I'd like it to be a bit cooler so the first thing you'll want to do is um, we want to get a better font. So I've um, just went to uh, to the internet and I looked for um, on Google Fonts here and I found this nice one called Orbitron. And uh, I've just downloaded Orbitron. It came down as a zip file. So um, when it comes down as a zip file, all you really need to do is just extract it. So I just right click and then click Extract All. Um, it created this folder. The Orbitron one comes with a few different um, variations. So I'm just going to go to the static folder and I'm going to choose the bold one. And, um, and you can just drag and drop it straight into your Godot project now. So I'm going to drag and drop it um, into my project. Um, where did it go? It went into sounds, weirdly. So I don't really want it in the sounds folder. Um, maybe uh, what I might do is um, I'll just create a new folder and uh, we'll call it uh, fonts or something like that. And then we can put um, Orbitron into uh, fonts. So uh, the the Orbitron uh, font, you can't just sort of like drag it on. It's a little bit convoluted, um, but it's a, a nice way to keep a consistent look across your whole game because what Godot 3.4 uses now is themes. So what I might do is, um, there's a couple of ways of doing this, but we can actually just create a new theme. So I'll, I'll, I'll um, maybe actually rename this folder to... Uh, uh, themes, something like that. So the uh, themes folder, now I've got this in here, but if I right click and I make a new resource and search for theme, the uh, the theme allows you to kind of like create this. Yeah, we'll call it, will I call it new theme? Um, Orbitron theme, I think. Um, save this. Um, the way it works is that uh, it allows you to choose uh, and customize everything and it gives you a little preview, this preview of what it'll look like. Um, the theme itself is over on the, or, or the inspector, um, the information about it is on the right hand side here. So I've got the Orbitron theme resource open and um, the default font you can see here is, uh, is empty. So all you need to do is I'm going to create a new dynamic font for that click on the dynamic font and then down where it says font that's where we can actually drag the font that we would like so what happens is um, everything because it's part of a theme now everything gets given that font and you can also um, change uh, for example the uh, the default font size for it as well so 16 is kind of this size it's pretty small for a game like this I need sort of like bigger fonts so I'm just going to um, maybe make this 48 and you'll see that, that everything changes um, it kind of looks a bit weird with these other ones but I don't really intend to um, to kind of use this and the font editor I, I don't want to go into it for um, into too much detail but you can um, you can customize pretty much everything so you can spend quite a bit of time making sure you have something that looks good uh, this 48 size font maybe is a bit big it looks terrible in some of these but it'll look okay for our label so I'm just going to leave it as it is just now and now I have this um, this Orbitron theme. All I need to do for the objects that I want this theme um, is to have this theme is I can uh, just choose that 
uh, theme for that particular element. So if I go down to where it says theme here, you'll see it says empty. I can take Orbitron theme and I can, um, if it's straight onto there, it automatically stretched my box, which is awesome. Um, I might make the box just a little bit bigger too. And then um, I'll use this uh, layout center top just to center it again. Um, now that this is centered, it actually makes me realize that how off center my actual player is. So I'm just going to take the player and move that. Um, so it looks like it's in the middle when we begin. And while we're here, just um, this sort of like light grey behind uh, isn't very space-like, so I'm going to change that too. So if you just go into Project and then Project Settings, um, under the Rendering heading, if you just go down to Environment, there's a default clear colour that's sort of like a light grey. And you can just drag that down to completely black. Um, and then we can close this and we have this completely black screen. So there we have um, the game. We have the ability to put some UI elements on and we've created a theme as well so that we've got a consistent look across all of our different UI elements. And in the, uh, so that's the score done. So in the next one, we're gonna um, do the menu. I kind of wanted to get this done because it's important that we can uh, lose the game in a nice way rather than simply restarting. It'd be nice if we um, went back to the menu. So we'll be doing that in the next video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.